My name is Olli Sinerma. I'm the co-founder project lead of Mindfield Games, a virtual reality studio in Helsinki, Finland. Uh, we founded the studio in 2013, and now we are on working with our first product called Pollen. Uh, usually, in my presentations, I begin with talking about things like you're living the most interesting time in the history of human man humankind. We have been building permanent human space stations on the orbit, landing small rovers on distant planets, our own cars will eventually start driving themselves. Of course, we have this thing called the internet, which connects pretty much the whole humanity together. And to make more of these Star Trek technologies, in near future, we will have virtual reality. So did Pavo already tell you why virtual reality is now possible? What is the one more Star Trek science fiction technology that pretty much everybody of you has, which has enabled it? You know it. Yeah, he said cell phone, I think. Cell phones. Well, smartphones with the quick, extremely high resolution screens have made it possible. Uh, with my topic for this discussion, I, in fact, I didn't choose it myself. I just noticed that the assembly had just put something there, and there is a bit of a typo. So virtual reality revolutionized the way we play games. And I decided to do something with the topic and title that wouldn't be so expected from a guy who does virtual reality games for a living. I'll begin by telling you why it won't. So, to get things started, let's first start with what, what are games. Games are a form of entertainment for humans. This is from year 3100 BC. Senate, board games were invented at that time. Ninth century, China, card games. Nowadays, we have a couple of new gaming modes, say mobile, which everybody is talking about, especially in Finland, which is totally rocking on the app store sheets. And, of course, PC and console. I'm not totally sure why we are anymore like separating these two, because eventually, very short time, say five years, the next generation or the generation after that one, they will probably be combined. What is virtual reality to this? At the moment, virtual reality is just a screen. It's just one more, well, sort of like what Virtual Boy was, but we are doing things that will totally be different than what it was at that point. But for gaming, well, Pavo already said something about that, that we have some difficulties there. I won't yet talk about those so much. But there are other things besides gaming that I think are really interesting on virtual reality. One of them being movies. Instead of paying 13 euros for a movie ticket, sitting there watching the advertisements go through and so on, I can do it back home. I can have the largest screen ever in front of me. And to take the thought experience a bit further, not just sit there back home watching some television screen, I could be watching Jurassic Park inside Jurassic Park. I could be watching Iron Man inside Tony Stark's apartment, his girlfriend sitting next to me. So these kind of things are really much what everything becomes a sort of game inside virtual reality. That's what I think is really interesting in it. What else besides movies, of course, watching sports events, whatever entertainment you enjoy, traveling, you can go to Egypt without getting your stomach sick. You can land on different planets without dying instantly. It can be used for psychological things. Say, for example, in this one, healing arachnophobia. Architecture. Our office is in Merihaka, so this is like a really hard thing for us, that architects are forced to watch what they are doing before it's implemented. And of course, training people, training astronauts in safe environments, training firemen, training surgeons, doing surgery from far away. All of this becomes possible. And of course, soldiers. Training in safe environments. But do you guys know what is the real killer app? What is the thing that will sell virtual reality to every household? Somebody is already thinking about it. You are, you are thinking about it. You are exactly the right age. Hell yes. Porn. 
porn really well works on virtual reality. Trust me, I know. <laughs> so, like I said, virtual reality won't yet revolutionize gaming, but eventually it will. It, we are just in so first steps. If this was virtual reality 20 years ago, virtual reality nowadays, whoops, sorry, looks like this. That's Eurotax Simulator. When you combine that game with virtual reality headset with the pedals and a wheel, it starts to feel kind of real. For example, I myself, uh, before we founded Minefield, I just wanted to test that how it works. I was driving in Euro Truck Simulator rubble from Amsterdam to London. I was like, hey, this is fun. I've been doing this for eight hours now. Uh, it's not a story I will probably tell my grandchildren. No. <laughs> but yeah, virtual reality is really young. It's almost as young as, this, as the inventor guy, Palmer Lucky, who put the thing out in 2012 as Kickstarter, uh, asking for mere $250,000 and gaining $2.5 million. Two years later, selling the whole thing for $2 billion to Facebook. A move that some people think are controversial. On my opinion, the Facebook sale, well, when we began Minefield, we were just building on a thing that was built on Kickstarter and Goodwill. Now it's a platform that is competed by Sony, by Facebook, probably Google, very likely Microsoft, and whoever. Samsung is going to be there also. Uh, here's a picture that is quite common in all presentations. Babo had written animated, which I think is much cooler than mine still pictures. But that's the, from Steam Dev Days. That's probably one of the most sophisticated virtual reality kits at the moment. And when you look at it, you probably see that it's pretty archaic at the moment. But yeah, that thing is quite awesome. When you're moving in the room with uh, two Samsung Galaxy Notes in front of your eyes, and you can watch under tables inside the virtual reality world, duck things that are coming towards you, and move freely in that room. It starts to feel sort of like the holodeck. It's not the holodeck. You, you have still the thing on your head, but it's getting there. It's really interesting. The thing about the technology is that we, have, we are pretty far with eyes, but what we are really missing, especially for me as a like, game developer op opinion, is interaction devices. So we have Razer Hydras here, I think, today. Excellent. So I definitely recommend trying it, if possible. That thing is pretty awesome. Another hand option would be the Control VR, which I think is, looks really promising. It's pretty much the same, but the weird thing that it has, I think, 12 sensors for each hand, enabling fingers. It gives a lot of things there. And imagine putting that besides just having the fingers, the hands, getting haptic controllers, uh, feeling response to it. Then we start to get somewhere. Uh, some technologies that are really good for VR didn't really start from there. Say, PlayStation Move. PlayStation had a really, uh, Sony had a problem thinking that what kind of games work on that device. Not many do. The one, I can't remember the name. You guys probably remember it. It's the one where they play the music on the background and you try to move slowly when the music comes. That one. Joost, exactly. Jean Sebastian Joost, yeah. But with VR, you don't know how stupid you look with those things in your hands. So instantly, Sony got hand controllers for itself. That, I think, is pretty awesome. Well, now we are talking about we have eyes, we have hands, then the feet. That's Vertex Omni, one of the first devices to do the feet. Uh, it was really popular in games developers convention. Uh, nobody almost got to try it because the lines were so long, almost as long as on the Oculus booth. Um, I'm not totally sure on that one. I have heard good things about it and bad things. I think this one, the Cyber Virtualizer, is much more interesting. It's not there yet either, <laughs> but it, at least it enables jumping and crouching. So it, we are getting there. So now we have feet, we have hands, we have eyes. What am I missing still? We have one more device that where we are really far. One more virtual reality device. Somebody from the front. 
smell. Do we have smell devices? <laughs> like personal equipment, yeah? Touch? Nope. Not touch. More. Sorry? Now haptics. I'm talking about your ears. That's the virtual reality device where we are really far. I think many virtual reality developers even forget that when you put on the headphones, close your eyes, you can see be sitting in the hockey match, you can be in the opera house, you can have a guy firing gun at, behind you. So audio, that one I think is one of the most important things that we can at the moment work with virtual reality. So while we wait for all these devices, it's not going to be Matrix yet, unfortunately. We are <laughs> but it's not the Matrix, but it's getting there. Eventually, virtual reality will catch up with what are mobile now, what is PC gaming now. It will not only catch up with it, it will surpass it. In the same sense as um, PC gaming has surpassed bo uh, board gaming. Virtual reality will have an advantage against normal flat screen gaming. It will not destroy it, it will stay there, but it will provide much more immerse, immersive presence in the gameplay. Totally different. So, these are my guesses. Virtual reality won't do it and will do it. But the one thing I'm totally sure, it totally revolutionizes the way we design games. How I know this, this is our first product, Pollen. We have been working it before now. Um, if we count along with the pre-production, eight months, six months in production. How much do I have time yet? Five? Oh, okay. So I'll go quickly through our design and then show you a couple of pictures of the game. So when we were designing Pollen, the things that work really well in virtual reality are every simulator whatsoever made in by mankind. Everywhere where I sit inside a machine, made by a mech, made by a um, car, airplane, anything works awesomely well. And that is one thing, selling point I think will happen for virtual reality. You will already have games for it that are totally fine working on that one. But as a game developer, as a five person indie studio, there's no point for us to start competing with Forza or Hawken, or Eve Valkyrie, or whatever are coming there. So we decided to take a genre, not so well known. The first person ad exploration adventure. Uh, some of you have maybe played Gone Home and know what I'm talking about. Then about the controls. A couple of games are using the idea that you can get a good presence if you put the virtual body of the character exactly in the same position as the player is himself sitting, but we didn't want to put the player into a wheelchair. We wanted our game to be fun also on a normal PC played on gamepad and not restrict the movement that much. There is also one game called Loading Human, which I think is the guys who are making it are freaking brave because they are implementing hand controls, especially in a time when hand controls are really hard to imitate with anything at the moment. We don't, you cannot imitate hand control of a, say, Razer Hydra with a mouse and a keyboard. But you can imitate a gamepad. So some guys are already going for animated hands and everything. We are not doing that one. We are doing a bit of different decisions there. One more, no horror. Every developer who starts with virtual reality puts on the thing on his face and thinks, oh man, Amnesia would be so awesome on this one. Yeah, it will be. It's awesome all the two minutes that you can play the game. And after that, you're throwing it away and never touching the device again. It's just Yeah, it's touched me. That's my girlfriend's there. <laughs> but yeah, also another thing about horror is that there's a lot of it coming. No point in fighting that war. So what did we decide to do? Something in the lines of space, so to say, 2001, moon, Solaris. Something in the lines of the dig. And here's a bit of a screenshot of the game that we are working on. And now I could do the video. I really could do it, but I can't get any video on the screen. That's the way. Uh, 
And now we really hope I have audio. <laughs> All right, so do I have any time for questions? Yeah, all right. Any questions? The blonde guy up front. What has been my biggest challenge in doing what in VR? Designing a game for VR. Oh, oh okay. multiple things. Somebody may have more mentioned the thing called nausea. Motion sickness inside virtual reality is a really big burden. The thing is that we have lizard brains. Our brains are moving along with our body. So if our eyes and our inner ear give different kind of inter information and it conflicts, the thing what happens is that you start to get sick. Your brain tells you that, oh, you're hallucinating. You probably want to throw up. And that is what is motion sickness. So that is one, because we have a character who is moving when the player is sitting, that we have been thinking about how we can solve this one. And pretty much the design decisions done on that one have been, one, don't do the game too quick. It, the player doesn't need to like, run all the time, like in most of the first-person shooter games. He moves slowly. Don't put their like, monsters jumping from everywhere. You need to shoot them all. Let him explore. Let him check out things. And character movement, for example, there, these are like all of them pile up above each other. It's not like one decision that this will solve the motion sickness for you. It's multiple things. Say, when we move character forward, instead of moving from zero to 60 kilometers per hour instantly, we accelerate slowly and get the speed up there. So motion sickness has been a one big thing. The other one, mm, well, I think I answered quite long for that one already. Any others? I think we are done with the questions. <laughs> but yeah, thank you. <laughs>